Hi, today our topic of discussion is Hansen Woodyard End Fire Array. In the last lecture, we have discussed different types of arrays that is broadside array and end fire array, wherein we have seen the broadside array is which consists of the maximum radiation pattern along the normal direction to that of the axis of the array and the progressive phase shift value for the broadside pattern is also equal to 0 degrees. Similarly, we have also seen end fire array where the maximum radiation pattern exists along the axis of the array and we have observed two values for the progressive phase shift that is to the maximum to be along 0 degrees we have seen beta should be equal to minus kd and for the maximum to lie along 180 degrees the progressive phase shift value should be equal to kd where d is the spacing between the elements but Though this end fire array is providing maximum radiation pattern along 0 degrees or 180 degrees, it is not ensuring that the maximum directivity is occurring. So that's why this type of end fire array is called ordinary end fire array which is not ensuring maximum directivity in the main lobe. So to enhance the directivity of an end fire array, instead of using an ordinary end fire array by modifying the progressive phase shift value in both the directions that is along 0 degrees and 180 degrees by some amount we can get the maximum directivity for the main lobe in the end fire array. So the main thing of designing Hansen Woodyard end fire array is to enhance the directivity of an end fire array without destroying any other characteristics. If we see the progressive phase shift value that is a modified progressive sh phase shift value we can see the equations for beta that is earlier which we considered as minus kd for 0 degrees for an ordinary end fire array. Here a parameter 2.92 upon n has been added to the same equation for maximum along 0 degrees and the same value with a positive sign we can consider for 180 degrees. So if we see how these values of beta is obtained for that Basically, if we consider the array factor equation of an array, that is normalized array factor equation, this already we know. In the earlier lectures of arrays, we have observed the array factor equation that, that is written over here. 1 upon n sin n, n by 2 kd cos theta plus beta divided by sin half kd cos theta plus beta, where this kd cos theta plus beta is our phase term. So, for the small value of psi, if psi is significantly uh, high, we can consider this entire term in the denominator. But if psi is very small, we can modify array factor equation in this way. That means here we have removed this sine term and we can see this is taking a sinc function form. Array factor is taking a sinc function form. So, if in this equation again, if we try for maximize the progressive phase shift value that is generally we know beta equal to minus kd cos theta when theta equal to 0 degrees if we consider that k cos theta at theta equal to 0 degrees as p where p we can consider as the optimization parameter why we are considering this beta like this because we want to maximize the array factor equation okay so if we consider beta in with that value Further, we can modify array factor equation in this way. Again, as I mentioned, by substituting different terms with different parameters. Here, we have substituted Q into K cos theta minus P with Z. You can see. And Q, again, we have substituted from the earlier equation as the ND upon 2, we have written as Q in this equation. So, this is the final equation of the array factor after these many modifications. And now, once we obtain the equation for array factor, we can write the equation for radiation intensity. So, generally we consider radiation intensity is the power radiated or power density in a particular direction. So, generally radiation intensity from the earlier parameter lectures and antenna parameter lectures, there we have seen radiation intensity is a square of field pattern. So, field pattern is nothing but array factor. So, we can write radiation intensity as array factor square 
In the earlier slide, we have seen this equation for array factor that is sin z upon z whole square. So this is the general equation for radiation intensity. Now we want to get radiation intensity in a particular direction. So that is when theta equal to 0 degrees, if we substitute theta equal to 0 degrees in the array factor equation where we have not considered z equal to k cos theta minus p. So this is after considering z equal to k cos theta minus p, this is the earlier step of this step. Okay. Now, again, as we substitute theta equal to 0 degrees in this equation, we can further modify the radiation intensity at theta equal to 0 degrees with this equation. Now, we have now two radiation intensity values. One is the normal radiation intensity, which we can define as the square of the sink function, uh, which is obtained from the array factor equation. And the other one is the radiation intensity in a particular direction to maximize the radiation intensity. So, as this is the maximum value, we can normalize our radiation intensity with respect to this maximum value of the radiation intensity. So, that is the normalized value of radiation intensity which we can consider as a ratio of radiation intensity to, ta to that of the maximum value. So, once we substitute for these values and theta equal to 0 degrees, we can obtain this final equation where we are considering Q into K minus P as V. If you want, you can pause this video here and observe for the equations. Now, the main thing is writing all these equations for array factor and radiation intensity is calculation of directivity. Because the main aim of designing a hansen Woodyard end fire array is maximize the directivity to enhance the directivity. So once if we want to know the directivity, the if we write the equation for directivity from the defined uh, parameters in the earlier lectures, we can write directivity as defined directivity as ratio of radiation intensity in a particular direction to that of the radiation intensity of an isotropic radiator. Okay. So, isotropic radiator intensity can be defined as power radiated per unit solid angle. So, again by defining this power radiated per unit solid angle, the, all these para parameters we have seen in the earlier lectures in the parameters of antennas. So, by substituting u of theta value, this equation and this equation in this equation and by only by substituting we can observe the equation for u naught. Again here you can pause and observe for the equations. Now once we get the value of u naught from the equation of directivity to maximize the directivity u naught must be minimized. So we have written array factor equation. That array factor equation is used in the intensity equation and that intensity equation we are using in the directivity equation. So to maximize the directivity intensity of isotropic radiator u naught must be minimized the equation which i have given in the earlier slides so from that in the process of minimization while integrating for this u naught we have obtained all these equations again you can pause and observe and here we have considered this entire parameter other than 1 upon 2 q 2 k q as g of v now to minimize u0 means again we have to minimize g of v. This minimum value of g of v can be obtained by observing for different values of v. At a particular value of v, we can obtain the minimum value of g. So, by experimental procedure, if we see the minimum value of g of v can be obtained at a value of v equal to minus 1.46. Again, in this equation of V that equal to Q into K minus P, by back substituting Q value that is earlier whatever we have assumed N D upon 2 and beta equal to minus P D, we can now define from this equation a new value of beta that is equal to minus K D plus 2.92 upon N where 2.92 approximately we are considering as pi. So this is the equation for beta for maximum along 0 degrees. Similarly, if we carry out the procedure for theta equal to 180 degrees, we can obtain the equation for beta 
which is positive of that of the equation which we have obtained for the theta equal to 0 degrees. And similarly, other conditions to, uh, to satisfy are the phase value. So, for theta equal to 0 degrees, we have seen beta value should be negative of this term. In the earlier slide, we have seen and by considering beta as negative of this term and by maintaining the phase value at a value equal to pi upon n, we can obtain maximum along theta equal to 0 degrees. Similarly, n phi array means it may radiate either along 0 degrees or 180 degrees. So, here we are designing for theta equal to 0 degrees. So, it should definitely give maximum along theta equal to 0 degrees. That means, we along 180 degrees direction, there should be a minimum. For, so, for that, in that direction, the phase value should be considered as pi. So, these are the conditions of phase value to be ensured to get the maximum radiation pattern along 0 degrees. Similarly, to get the maximum radiation pattern along 180 degrees, these conditions should be followed, satisfied. So, here psi should be pi upon n for maximum along 180 and it should be pi for minimum along 0 degrees. So, wherever there is a minimum there, psi should be maintained at pi and wherever there is a maximum there, psi should be maintained at pi upon n. So, all these conditions are basically called hansen woodyard conditions and one more parameter where there is a restriction is the spacing between the elements. In To avoid grating lobes, in earlier lectures we have seen the distance between the elements should be less than lambda. But here, by satisfying that criteria and uh, particularly taking a value lambda upon 4, that is quarter wavelength, spacing should be definitely man maintained between the elements. Then only we can get by satisfying this condition and the phase values and by taking progressive phase shift values as mentioned, we can obtain maximum directivity when compared to that of the normal or ordinary end fire array. So, when we compare ordinary end fire array and Hansen Woodyard end fire array, the directivity of Hansen Woodyard end fire array is 1.805 times greater than that of an ordinary end fire array. And you can see the directivity patterns here, end fire array and Hansen Woodyard end fire array. Here if you see the main lobe is more in terms of width, where here the main lobe is narrower in terms of width. That means the directivity of this slope is maximum when compared to this. That means it is more pointed in a particular direction. So, these are the comparisons and completely about Hansen Woodyard and Ferrari. Thank you.